Well, hey, welcome everybody. I'm Jason and I'm here with Kirk and we got some special guests today. Kirk, you want to introduce uh, our friends from Awaken Church? Yes, we are here with Brian Cavender and Josiah Lay from Awaken Church outside of Austin, Texas in Round Rock. Is that right? That's right. That's correct. Awesome. Why in the world? Why would anyone go to Round Rock? Why would anybody go to Round Rock? Why wouldn't they go to Round Rock? Right, the there you go. That's the world. It. We got good breakfast tacos. We got a great church. <laughs> Come on, that, that is the trifecta. I'm pretty sure, right? That's it. Breakfast, tacos, and church. Man, what else could you ask? Right, and donuts. That's awesome. So, how long have you guys been there? Uh, so, me and my family, we moved to Texas uh, about four years ago from Southern California. Yeah, and then my wife and I, we moved to Houston area about six years ago, and then we moved. Uh, to Round Rock about one year ago. Okay, awesome. Now, get uh, Pastor Ryan, give me the give me the brief history of Awaken Church. Tell me your involvement and and it got started and and you know it hasn't it hasn't been smooth sailing. I will say, just disclaimer: we like the last eighteen months have probably been the hardest ministry years of anyone alive on the planet. And you're just talking about being there for four years. Josiah, you said the one year, like that, that's been a, it's been a crazy one and a half last year. So there's a lot to this story. Get, let us have it. Yeah. I guess the good thing is when you haven't been in ministry long, you didn't have a chance to really, I guess, get to know much <laughs> different uh, before yeah. we hit for us. And so, yeah, we uh, launched as a church uh, just over three years ago now. Uh, and so actually uh, we had a different founding pastor uh, who, who launched the church. I was uh, blessed to be on that launch team, blessed to be able to step into a, a pastoral role and to be serving uh, in that way. And when COVID hit, uh, I think it caused a lot of people just to, to just look introspectively at, at kind of what God was calling them to. And it was in that season uh, that our founding pastor, Ben Shank, just felt called to, to go back into the military and uh, at the same time, God was calling me uh, to step up into the, the lead pastor role. And so uh, it's been a, a wild ride. We've seen, I think, just a lot of the kind of stereotypical church plant stories that have come our way. But we've also mm. seen God's faithfulness, man, to come out of COVID uh, in a, a healthier place as a church in pretty much every category. I mean, honestly, okay, like, come on. attendance life groups, all of these things. I mean, we came out in better shape than we went in, which I know isn't the case for a lot of churches, but yeah, everyone uh, watching right now is like, tell us your secret. What does that mean? Unpack that we can spend the rest of our time just unpacking what you just said right there. Prayer, prayer and God's faithfulness, man. I wish I had a, a, a secret potion or some magical formula to share, but that's really all it was. And so, yeah, just time and time again, we've seen God's faithfulness. I think one of the biggest factors in that was bringing uh, this guy on board as our worshiping creative pastor. He came on uh, just about a year ago now. Um, and he and his wife, Larissa, and their family have just been uh, just a huge piece of, of transformation for our church and uh, helping us lead this thing and getting to where we're at right now. Yeah. So how long have you been the lead pastor, Ryan? Uh, it's been about a year. So at the same time, we, we brought him on. That was that was one of the things when the elder board invited me on, uh, I said, you know, if I'm going to do this, I, I'm going to need a, a really solid worshiping creative pastor. So I've told Josiah, I said, we created a job description that was, I thought, a unicorn. Like, this guy doesn't exist. Uh, but then he came in and he not only filled each one of those, uh, you know, qualifications, but went, went above and beyond. And so it's been, yeah, just a true joy to, to walk alongside this brother for the last year. Couldn't do it without him. I always have to like shoot down those compliments, man. <laughs> so this guy always tries to get my head too big, but uh, <laughs> I appreciate the kind words. It's, it's funny because in kind of my wife and I's season of preparation for ministry, um, we were really serving in uh, a lot of different capacities in our previous season in Houston. And um, one, I mean, Jesus was always the primary uh, gifts and talents were always secondary. <laughs> and so uh, it came actually back to a season where, you know, my background's music and, and worship leading in that. But uh, I had actually previously stepped away from that uh, for a season, really felt giving the Lord my gifts and talents back and saying, Lord, you use these things how you want to use them. But hey, we're going to be focused on discipleship and uh, that. And so that's what we've been doing is really living out missional communities and to see how the Lord was preparing us for transitioning in here, not just to be able to lead worship on Sunday mornings and that, but to really help uh, join this guy in cultivating culture and community. Um, I just, only God can do that type, that type of preparation work. So very cool. Yeah. And you guys, you're not plan. This church isn't just anywhere. You guys are in the Austin area 
Uh, and we, we understand that Round Rock's not quite Austin, but tell us, tell us a little bit about the, the unique culture that you're in and uh, what, is, what you guys are doing to reach that culture. We've got a great mural uh, in, the, in the Georgetown area that says, you know, Georgetown, Texas, north of, of cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're an interesting spot. I think Austin in general, like there's a lot of stereotypes that I think are probably pretty true about Austin. Uh, it's a very eclectic city, uh, lots of transplants, especially coming from the coast now. Um, it's not your typical Bible belt. People think of Texas, they think of your typical Bible belt. I've heard uh, Austin referred to as the hole in the Bible belt. Um, very unchurched city by and large, uh, I think in part because of some people coming in from the coast. Um, but it's made it an interesting place to reach to. There's plenty of opportunity. Uh, it's a difficult place for church plants to, to, to launch and to, con- to grow. But man, we've seen that as a huge opportunity for us. And where we're at in Round Rock specifically, it kind of, we see a blend. We see a lot of Austin and that vibe, that, that sort of culture. But we also see some more of the traditional uh, uh, Texas, you know, a little more of the suburbs and everything. And so uh, it makes it interesting to, to pastor such a, a wide range of people. But we've always been all about diversity, not just, you know, not just racially, but in, in every way. And God has blessed what's overall pretty you know, relatively small congregation with just incredible diversity. So it's great to see really just the body of Christ uh, existing. I think the way that it was meant to. Yeah. You'll literally get uh, boots and belt buckles and, uh, and Yeezys in the, <laughs> in the same space. So, yeah. That is awesome. Tell us this, you, you took over in, you know, a very, very unique ministry season. And I love your answer. That was check, check uh, prayer, faithfulness of God. You passed on this school. Here's your golden star. <laughs> Tell me, and, and absolutely, that's the foundation. I'm not mean to make light of it, but like, what, what are some of the things that you guys did? Like everybody's trying new things. Everybody was doing some things. What did you, how was it taking on leadership? What were you feeling? What were you discerning? And then what were, what were some of the actual choices you brought in a worship creative guy? What were some of the other choices that you said, you know what, we've got to do this in this season yeah, no, that's a great question. I think for us, it was all about keeping people connected. And so I can't count how many times we split up the list of our church and went and dropped stuff off on people's doorsteps. My phone calls we made, text messages we sent out, really just making sure people felt loved, making sure they felt cared for, trying to connect people as best we could. And uh, really, I think that's a big part of you know why we came out of COVID as strong as we did, as connected as we did. And I think as far as just that kind of the more organizational standpoint, again, we had, we had a lot of time when you're not having to put together a full Sunday morning and you're filming a sermon on Thursday night, uh, you know, we had more time to really look at, Hey, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? And if it's not in line with our vision, with our goals, with our values, then, then, you know, let's scrap it and try something new. I think it gave really most pastors and churches just that freedom just to sort of question everything and revise anything. I love the uh, the leadership principle. I can't remember if it's Simon Simic or whoever came, you know, but the the quit something every day yeah. and uh, really kind of cut cutting the dead weight and uh, getting simple with things. I think has kind of been the, uh, the thing that's got us through. Yeah. So coming out of COVID now, as things return to normal, what uh, I'm curious, what things have you decided? Yeah, we quit doing that. We're going to stay. We're going to keep quitting that, uh, and we're going to do these other things. Yeah, I think the temptation is to try to be all things to all people, right, which quickly becomes all these programs, which quickly becomes uh, stretching all your people too thin. Uh, And, you know, you see that plenty with burnout and things like that. And so we said, hey, what's most important to us? It's Sunday mornings and it's life groups. And it's obviously, you know, keeping the lights on some of those basic things like that. And so, you know, we've made some hard decisions and had to to scale back on some, some programs and cancel some events, but really needing to keep the, the main thing, the main thing and making sure that we're prioritizing our, our people and prioritizing, you know, spiritual growth and formation. Yeah. And I think uh, as far as, you know, more the creative Avenue, um, you know, wanting to keep our social media and that outward facing um, to kind of give that as the, as the welcome center as, you know, as, as the new modern day at uh, a lobby <laughs> so far as a church, to connect with people, but not trying to do stuff outside of our capacity, not driving people crazy because we're trying to make a cool video and we've got nobody to make that cool video. So <laughs> running the simple play, you know, doing the graphics, getting creative, but 
uh, not trying to do uh, or be even just someone who we're not in this season. Yeah. yeah Speaking that's, of, cool. it, it, that's one thing uh, you also changed during the season. You decided to, to roll out some new branding. What, what led to that decision? Yeah, I think the best way to put it is that we really, I should say, I don't want to speak for you, but uh, you can speak for me. The, the, the mission, the vision, they were good, but it really felt like we were wearing somebody else's clothes. Uh, and that's not even talking about previous leadership of the church. I think, you know, uh, adopting, you know, uh, a church planning network's mission and vision, hey, they, there's nothing wrong with that, but it just didn't feel like us. And so I think Awakened Church, and I know every pastor says this, but it's truly unique. We're in a unique spot. We have really unique people. I could tell you some stories about the types of people that God's brought to us. And it just didn't feel like we just fit that mold. And so we felt like we needed something that was specific to us, specific towards the goals that God had put on our hearts, uh, where he wants to lead, you know, this church specifically. And um, I think between that and kind of the leadership change, COVID, everything else just said, I mean, we need to give our people really some very clear direction as to where we're headed so that they could really rally around this. And we felt probably for the several months leading up to this kind of unveiling of the, of the new branding that uh, our people were really anticipating, you know, and, and needing something that they could rally around. Um, and so, man, we've just been, been blown away at the response since then. Yeah. And just to add to that, I think it's kind of almost worked a little bit backwards of, um, I think, because I remember when we announced, hey, we've, we've got an announcement to the church. Like some people are like, oh, have we, have we finally got a building? You know, it's kind of like, that's like the mark of making it in the church world. And uh, we're like, no, <laughs> like we're starting with like the foundational things of identity yeah. uh, and culture. And uh, we want to put our time, like roll up the sleeves and put in the work that's, um, that's needed there. Um, so that man, whenever a building comes or if we just keep, you know, being a pop-up church or whatever the Lord has for us in the store, like we know who we are, we're confident in our identity in Christ. We're confident of who we are as a church and the impact that we're called to make uh, in this world. And, um, and that that's our foundation really to move forward in. Yeah. That's so cool. I know uh, a couple of our team members came out for, uh, a service and uh, hang out, hung out for a couple of days and loved it and was, you know, really impressed by you guys and all that you're doing. Because uh, it was during that time when you're thinking about rebranding that you like, that's when we connected our team and you and your team. Uh, curious what, like in that process, what that process was like for you, both the on-site, the, uh, the discovery, getting, you know, working through, and I'm not even just talking about our process, but the whole process of rebranding, working through that, doing the deep work of culture, doing like what you're talking about, not just building, not just signage, doing the deep work of culture and identity. What was that process like for you guys? And, and even maybe some of the team that you lead. Yeah, that's good. Uh, challenging, humbling, exciting. Uh, man, I, I can go on and on. I, I think it's one of the most valuable processes I've been through, probably my professional career. Honestly, I was just continually impressed. I mean, Jeremy and Corey were, were fantastic to work with, but just the process. I had to find myself uh, trusting the process. I know that's kind of a, a, a catchphrase nowadays, but really, as I continued to trust that process, just felt God continuing just to just unearth some things, some things that needed to be maybe tossed aside, but some things that I didn't even really realize were there of, of, of like new light shed on some of the people that God's brought us, some of the direction he's leading us in. And so we came into this, I think, looking for a new logo and looking for some new, new messaging, but I think came out with such a clear direction of where God's leading us as a church. And honestly, I think that's one of, been one of the biggest benefits of, of working with y'all. Hasn't been anything that people can see, but I think it's been the the, the change of direction and the infusion of culture and some of those unseen things uh, that our speak is directly impacted. It was really cool because I think back in December, I started reading a book called Culture Code. And it really uh, has been an influential book in, in, in my life. And, um, you know, you walk away with all of this gold from a great book, you know, but then you're like, but how do we implement this? How do we do this? And I have to be honest, I've never been through a rebranding process. I didn't expect um, some of the cultural maybe um, messaging to come come from, um, but I'll never forget when we were out here during um, during your team's visit and sitting and uh, we were just you know after a, a couple hours of spending with with Corey and Jeremy and I remember um, 
Corey was asking us things on culture and, you know, what are, what is our church like? What are our people like? And we were, you know, kind of just rattling things off. And then he said, here, I think what you guys are trying to say is this. And he read it to us. And I remember I just started crying. I just, it was just like one of those like connection moments that you have in life where you're like, first of all, I didn't know that somebody could be artic- that articulate with words. <laughs> so to witness that process, like real time was cool. Um, but to have somebody give language to the things that we were feeling beneath the surface, uh, was, was truly like a, a special moment in my yeah. life. I think really. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Well, well, I, I will say that uh, that's, you know, I, the deep work often is where you do need to start. And I love connecting with leaders who understand that, whether we're talking about leadership or, or ministry structure uh, or logos. I will, I do think the team has put together a really good look and feel. Uh, yeah. and, but, uh, but tell me about, you know, I, I love that because I think what's more than look and feel, uh, more than colors and fonts and textures, those tell a story. Um, but your story is, is happening. It's unfolding now. Tell me, tell me, give us an update on what's happening since rollout. Now coming out of COVID, you're, you're, you're trending better. You don't have to go into details on, on all the things that you're measuring. Um, I love what, what's God doing or, or what do you think he's preparing you for next? I'd love to hear. I'll give some funny answers first. I think the, uh, in the initial unveil, it was really cool. Cause we, you know, we like, we know we can't make everyone happy with a logo in that. So you'd want to try, <laughs> but we were really curious and I'll never forget. We have um, kind of a middle-aged woman in, in, in the, uh, in our congregation. And um, I was a little bit worried about thing. We went a little bit more with the modern kind of clean feel and from a, like a script kind of font in our previous uh, logo design. And I'll never forget. She says, man, this is like really cool. It's a really cool logo, but I feel like I can still relate to it. And I remember hearing that and being like, wow, that's a win. That's, that is really just good, you know, candid feedback that we captured in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I think overall, man, just the response has been amazing. I think just getting people just uh, an identity of their own. I mean, are people wearing these shirts that, that we created like all the time? Uh, and so it's been cool just to see them kind of grab a hold of that and to hear them use some of this language that we had kind of been sprinkling in here and there, but then obviously have been been, been preaching, you know, heavy since, uh, since the unveiling. But I think, you know, you, you asked about what's been going on since then. I think God's really been speaking to me uh, in terms of what my expectations were for this rebrand. And I thought, you know, we're building essentially a building, right? With something that's going to be able to attract people. And I guess in a sense, that's partially true, right? Our branding looks better. It's more true to us. It's more visually appealing. Um, but just recently, God kind of rocked me and said, hey, you know, I know you think that's what's going to bring the people in. It's like, but you didn't build a building. He's like, all I gave you was the blueprint. He's like, now it's time to do the hard work, right? To, to, to demolish the things that need to be demolished, to do the digging, to get down. And maybe then you can lay the foundation. And maybe then that's when I'll really truly start to build my church. Um, and so that's just been a humbling process. But again, I think it's led us to now that we have that messaging, now that we have that clear vision, now that our people understand it, even our ministry leaders, everybody else. It's like, okay, now this is just the blueprint. Now we get the hard work to do to get to where God ultimately wants us to go. Oh, so cool. I love that. Yeah. What, uh, give me the, give me the big picture. Where does he ultimately want us to go? Where does he call in you? Yeah. So, I mean, we feel called to, to share the gospel far and wide, man. And so I know that there's a lot of churches that do the big church thing really well, and that is not going to be us. We want to see the gospel go farther. God has, I mean, in the church of about a hundred average attendance on a Sunday, I mean, we've got well over 10% of our local uh, or former global missionaries. I mean, we've got former pastors, you've got some incredible people and some future pastors too. And so we really feel like we're, we want to be that sending church and not just the church that says they want to do that, not just the church that says they want to be about discipleship, but one that truly like will make the hard decisions, will make the big investments in order to be able to do that. And so uh, Awakened Church, uh, it, it won't be your next mega church. Neither one of us is going to be the next big uh, Instagram pastor, uh, but we truly feel like God's you know, uniquely called us, equipped us, and even placed us in an area uh, that really, you know, needs to hear the gospel. And so we're excited to be a big part of that. Yeah. I remember one of the first conversations with Art Speak, and uh, they were like, can you just kind of summarize like really shortly in a few sentences, like where you're at 
and where you want to go. I was like, I think I can do it in a few words. And they were like, really? Really? You think you can do it? I was like, I think so. I was like, less hype, more intentionality. And uh, let's, let's, and, and from that, really, a lot of our language, I think, started to flow of kind of the go deep and get real and, and some of that uh, practical language. But um, I think Ryan said it best, you know, this, this church is about Jesus. <laughs> like, we are all about Jesus. We've been uh, preaching a series really from our rebrand launch on, uh, on Christ alone, walking through Colossians and um, to hear how impactful that's been getting people's eyes on Jesus first and foremost. And then second is, you know, it's about people and, uh, and wanting to see people empowered to do the work of Jesus um, has been, I think one of the best parts about this season and starting to see that take root, but definitely like Ryan said, where we're going. That is cool. Fantastic. Love that. Less hype, more intentionality. I think that's going to resonate with a lot of people, maybe especially in Austin area. Uh, speaking to other pastors, those in your church or outside, if uh, we have several that, that lean into the teaching here and, uh, and when we interview and tell these awesome stories, what, uh, what would you tell a pastor right now that was considering or a creative director? I, I think because we those are usually the two that we connect with, either lead pastor or the creative director. Uh, what would you tell somebody that was considering a rebrand right now? Yeah, I mean, I think I would tell them what I've told a lot of my pastor buddies already is you need to call Art Speak first and foremost. Hey, come on. Uh, you guys are phenomenal. Uh, but I think the other thing, I kind of touched on it earlier, is and make sure you're ready. Uh, make sure your heart's ready. I don't think my heart was ready, if I'm being honest. And there's been several moments, I think Josiah and I have sat with it several times of like, man, I don't think we knew what, what God was going to do. <laughs> and maybe it's better that way. But I think making sure that you're ready, making sure if you've got a larger church that your your staff's ready for what's coming. Because I think, you know, the 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 investment is, is more than just dollars and cents. It needs to be a, a full buy-in from your team. And I think that's going to be the the best way to get the most out of it. That's awesome. Yeah. I would hundred percent agree with that. Don't make the decision alone and uh, sit with it, <laughs> sit with it. Cause man, you're there. You guys took us on a deep journey and by the grace of God, somehow he shepherded us through that process. But uh, it was very, um, I guess, unveiling to maybe a lot of things that we didn't, we didn't suspect. And um, man, I mean, thank God for that really. Well, man, we thank God for you guys. And and we've seen over and over again now, those that go through it with this kind of heart, you know, and have, and really leaning into the process. Some have called time out and it's taken six months because the, because of the questions were just more than they were thought they were ready to answer. Uh, you guys pressed through faster than that, but we did get through. And now, you know, I would say, you know, the fruits of a creative, authentic expression of yourself and what God's, who God's called you to be. That is going to resonate with people in your community that are called to the similar things or that you're called to reach. It's just going to fit. And, uh, and so I'm excited to hear, maybe we can touch base again in the near future and watch uh, your influence grow. I love your, your preaching stuff that's close to my heart. I feel like the, the modern church often says bigger, faster, famouser. And, you know, and you guys are saying, well, what if we get more slow and more intentional uh, and less hype and more intentional in our discipleship? I love it. Uh, Kirk and I are rooting for you and our whole team loves you. Love the look. And if anybody wants to connect with you guys, uh, you may be able to find these two on Instagram, whether they want to be or not, but it's uh, <laughs> Awaken Church. TX, right? That's the yep. domain. Yep. Awaken Church TX uh, outside of Austin. Uh, highly recommend anybody leaning in and checking out what you guys are putting together because I think it's, I think it looks good. I know I'm completely biased when I say that, but uh, but I think it uh, it feels good, and that's your heart. That's something that came. That's an expression of who God's made you guys to be there and the church there. And we're just excited to see you reach more and more people. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't a, a weak link in the whole process. You guys uh, shepherded and led us through and through every step of the way, and um, that was very unexpected uh, through the branding process, but so necessary. So I I can't say personally thank you enough to Art Speak uh, just just for this one of a kind of experience. Yeah, absolutely, man. 
Well, <laughs> thank you. Honestly, I, Kirk and I having planted a church together and then feeling called to, to leave that church so that we could come alongside other church planters and church leaders. That was no, that was no easy path. That path hadn't been marked out for us. And so uh, it, it just personally, I received that as confirmation and encouragement for my own calling. And so I just, I celebrate that because it is seriously an honor and a privilege for our team to be able to come along and serve as your team uh, through the branding process and, and, and even into the future. We love, love, love what you guys are doing. And just, uh, you gotta, you've always got some fans uh, here at Art Speak. Thanks guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Guys. Thank you for your time today, Kirk. Anything else? That's it. Check them out. Waken Church, Waken Church, Texas. Yeah. See you guys later. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. See ya. Peace.